welcome to today's oil for the journey oil change and i am your journey reader denise denton Mitty. and today's oil change is based on the readings of leviticus chapters 14 through 16 in the old testament um, please note that the book of leviticus as as well as Deuteronomy is a book of law and there are 613 laws in the Old Testament specifically these three chapters chapters 14 through 16 of, um, of Leviticus give specific law or detail to the priest and the high priest um, of the tabernacle or the tent of meeting which kind of pre is a predecessor for the tabernacle uh, physical uh, temple and these laws basically uh, specifically have to do with um, atoning for sin and they are very specific and very detailed um, and we worship a very detailed very specific God down to the hair and our head being numbered, um, even down to knowing every single count of grain of sand on the ocean beach uh, shores. So our God is detailed. The cells in our body and how they operate are detailed. Chemically balanced is just a lot of detail, y'all. So, same thing with the Old Testament laws. Now, I want to just point out that um, chapter 14 and 15, chapters 14 and 15, has to do with cleansing from skin diseases and cleansing from um, discharges from the body and that would cause um, uncleanness. Now, the important thing to note is our God's egalitarian nature. He saw, okay, the skin diseases is kind of self-explanatory. And usually they came under the, 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 the label in, in the Hebrew of leprosy in translation. But it wasn't the, it was the most major skin disease of the day, but, and the most contagious, but not the only skin disease. And, so in order to to make the community of Israelites clean, there were specific laws given in how to cleanse your body from, um, be healed and be cleansed from um, these skin diseases. Also want to note that um, this continued all throughout the New Testament you read throughout the New Testament and in particular remember when Jesus um, healed 10 lepers and only one came back to uh, say thank you the, the he sent all 10 of them to the priests to declare their healing and their cleansing um, and usually in the Old Testament and in biblical tradition the Association with sin and uncleanness of the body um, were uh, directly proportional and correlated. So if you were sick, if you were um, unclean, that means you sin. And um, it, 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 it generally wasn't so um, with the sexual uh discharges which is chapter 15 and i'm gonna get to that in just a second but it was definitely seen that way with the um diseases of the skin and the reason why they were communicable they were communicable so um I'm kind of jumping forward to the application but in application sin in general is communicable except for sexual sin Sexual sin is the only sin that we commit against our own individual bodies. Although we commit it with somebody, generally speaking, it is the only one that we commit against our own and defile our own bodies. Um, whereas other sins that the Bible calls transgressions, uh, we commit against other people um, and iniquities against our God, our Father in heaven. So that's for sin um, of the body. 
specific ways to clean the body so that nobody else would get those skin diseases. And then with the discharges from the body, our egalitarian God, he not only had cleansing rituals for women who were on their menstrual cycles, but also men who emitted semen, whether in sexual relation um, with their wives or um, nocturnal emissions. And they had to be cleansed too. So I just want to put that out there. And it wasn't because sexual sin was seen as something impure in the confines of marriage, but just so that your body's discharging um, impurities, stuff that it's not using and for the body, and that would be um, considered unclean. Your body naturally emits excretion, and for women, you know, when we're on our cycles, um, it's not clean what comes out of us. So, needless to say, it really didn't have specifically to do with impurity in sex and all that pertains to sexual relations within marriage. It just had to do with the fact that the body was releasing itself, discharge, that's why I said discharge, of um, the things that were impure um, in those particular scenarios. All right, so that's chapter 15. And chapter 16 is the highlight, probably the climax, of the Levitical law as it as it came to sin and cleansing. So there were two offerings that were made popular on this Day of Atonement, which Jews celebrate to this day as Yom Kippur. And the Day of Atonement um, incorporated uh, sin offerings and burnt offerings. The major difference is that burnt offerings were for atonement. They were for um, the high priest to account for and give atonement for, give payment for the sins of him himself and for his household and for the community at large. And also to cleanse the tent of meeting, the temple, the tabernacle. Um, that was for atonement, burnt offerings, atonement. Sin offerings, which were very plenteous during the Levitical and Deuteronomical periods. Sin offerings, however, were specifically for um, sin, for whatever sin it was. And um, note that our God made accommodation for those that were poor and who could afford the doves, they could use pigeons for that sin offering. But just so you know, they were offered, sin offerings were offered as cleansing offerings and that's why you see them in chapters 14 and 15 and in 16 um, day of atonement you had the burnt offering and the sin offering and also in um, the day of atonement you had what's called the scapegoat and um, the book of hebrews in the new testament makes a tremendous correlation between the old testament laws and jesus christ and his fulfillment of the law in the sense that um, Christ was our safe uh, scapegoat in essence he took away our sins and that's what the scapegoat did in the day of atonement and in um, Levitical law the scapegoat the priest would basically in essence pronounce all the sins of the community on that goat and allow that goat to go away into the wilderness to um, be sent away, if you will. And that's how our sins are atoned for in um, our Christian faith through Christ who took away the sins of the world. Um, so the Day of Atonement was, is, is not only um, sacred, holy, and important for um, those that um, of Jewish faith, as in this Old Testament example in chapter 16 of Leviticus, but also in our New Testament faith, because um, Jesus is the only lamb, unblemished lamb, that could take away the sins of the world. He was without sins, and he took the sins of the world upon him and took them away upon his death, and then his resurrection cleansed, made anew. So, I hope um, that was 
sufficient in a nutshell. Um, it is a lot to digest in five, eight minutes. But God be with you. And I pray that this oil change gives us a sense of application of how relevant it is to have Christ atone for our sins. We no longer have to um, slaughter our animals in sacrificial offerings of sin and burnt offerings. We have the ultimate sacrifice, the Son of God who gave himself for us, who was without sin and knew sin for us um, and became our scapegoat and atoned for all our sins so that we can have um, fellowship with God, right relationship with a holy God. Grace and peace to you, my brother and sister.